good afternoon everyone yes. uh, we are going to present to you the anudino which is a low cost equivalent of the arduino first of all i'll introduce myself and my team members i am parishmita is chandana piyush samrit and harish we like to thank all our mentors for their constant support and guidance throughout this two months the overview of the project we first created a repository of hardware interfacing using the anudino board after that we went on to developing a relatively low cost home automation system using this board uh, we want to release a, a book for learners uh, with some detailed instructions about the anudino board Uh, the book uh, is already under processing the uh, experiments have been documented and is going to be released soon this is the book which is going to be released what is arduino arduino is a open source electronics prototyping platform uh, lots of arduino enabled boards are available in the market already the most common one being arduino uno this is the board uh people from the electronics background have already used this extensively to develop various projects now what is anudino then it is a microsoft a uh, micro sized arduino enabled usb board it's very uh, low cost compared to arduino it uses 80 tiny 85 microcontroller and the familiar ID arduino ide is used for its programming this is the board now we'll see the differences between arduino and anudino first and foremost the most important point is the cost arduino costs around 1500 and anudino has been developed at less than rupees 100 around 80 rupees a uh, person starting in the world of electronics it's very it's not practical for the person to buy a 1500 board and then start off with the project so it's better for the person to buy just 80 rupees board to start off in this world to uh, interface uh, devices uh, so um, that is the, f uh, the first and foremost difference next comes memory anudino has a memory of 8 kb 2 kb of it is occupied by its bootloader so 8 6 kb is remaining for its programming purpose uh, arduino has a memory of 32 kb fr from which 5 kb is occupied by the bootloader Anudino has eight pins, uh, out of which six are I/O pins and two are VCC and ground. Arduino, on the other ha hand, has 32 pins, out of which 23 I/O pins are available. From this uh, difference, it is clear that Arduino it's uh, quite easy to interface devices with Arduino. It has lots of pins, lots of memory. But we have uh, successfully interfaced a large number of devices with the Anudino. This is our interfacing board. we've interfaced leds the uh, intensity of the leds can be changed using the potentiometer this is the piezoelectric sensor this is the relay the servo motor the photo cell the hall effect sensor the thermistor the push button so these are the basic elements that have been interfaced this is the arduino experiment board that we used after interfacing the basic uh, sensors and uh, the motors we went on to establish various communication equipment with the arduino uh, with the anudino sorry i'll pass on the, to chandana to explain about the experiment uh yeah after interfacing the environmental sensors and motors and motion detectors we uh, explored the wireless communication devices uh, this is the bluetooth module hc06 Uh, as you have all used bluetooth you know that it's used to uh, control devices through wireless communication uh, our primitive experiment was to control an led and to switch it on off and flash it and then we used lm35 uh, sensor to record the temperature measurements and display it on the bluetooth map that is already available on play store This is the DHT11 module which displays the dew point, humidity and temperature. Our uh, next is Zigbee module. This is an RF module that works at 2.4 GHz frequency. Uh there's a coordinator XB at the microcontroller and then there's a router XB. Again we used to we used it to control an LED. 
uh, GSM. Uh, we interfaced GSM module as well. Uh, the, there's a great challenge with this because it occupies a lot of memory as Anodino doesn't have hardware serial possible with it. Uh, GSM is GSM module is just like a mobile for a mobile operator. You insert the SIM and you can uh, send and receive uh, SMSs through that. Mm, what we did was to uh, switch it on at home and uh, I mean switch on an LED at home and send an acknowledgement to the user to his mobile. Uh, well, a GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System and it, GPS modules are used everywhere for navigation purposes, uh, distance measurements and uh, a track vehicle monitoring and that. Uh, we uh, try to obtain the values of longitudes and latitudes at places and display and again we used a Bluetooth module to display. Uh, RFID reader. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification Device. Uh, it's basically, basically we have each user has a unique identification number. The RFID tag has an RFID chip in it, and the RFID reader uh, sends carrier signals, and the modulator impinges the data commands on it uh, through by an os generated by an oscillator, and the RFID tag detects the radiations and then sends back the uh, signals, which is demodulated by the mo demodulator on the RFID reader, so it detects the tag number. These are uh, used in various places such as companies to monitor the entry and exit of persons and to allow access only to the authorized people. It's also used in various farms. Uh, so what we did uh, all was to uh, display the RFID tag. Based uh, upon this, we can develop various experiments. Uh, accelerometer. Uh, accelerometer uh, can be used in various gesture controlled robots and for gaming purposes. We just try to calibrate the accelerometer and obtain the accelerations of X, Y and Z axis through Anodino. Uh, we have also interfaced the 7 segment display using the Anodino. Uh, we have used the 7447 decoder for this purpose. Uh, seven segment displays are nowadays widely used in many applications and especially students find them very useful in their projects. So they need not use Arduino in uh, every case to uh, drive the seven segment display. It can be done using the Arduino board. We have tried to show that. Uh, the uh, DC motor. Uh, we have interfaced two DC motors with the Arduino, uh, with the Arduino board. Uh, DC motors are nowadays widely used uh, for by the students uh, to develop robots. Uh, making robots is now a craze uh, in students. Uh, so we interface two DC motors using the Anodino board. Uh, as she already told, uh, various sensors can also be interfaced with the Anodino. So the Anodino has the power to drive a complete robot. Uh, automation. Uh, uh, all the experiments we are done with all the experiments here uh, to show the power of Anodino. Uh, we have also developed a room automation project uh, using the simple board. Uh, the medium of communication that we have used is the infrared. Uh, various home automation systems already exist in the market and they use Zigbee, Bluetooth, etc. But it's very costly. Uh, so we have done it with the simple 80 rupees Anodino board and the medium of communication is the infrared which is very cheap. Uh, again, uh, one major advantage of our system is that uh, we have developed ready-made modules as can be seen here. They can be directly plugged in into 3-pin plugs. Uh, so many times when people install the automation systems, they have to call an electrician who tampers with the wires, he has to do, uh, do the wiring and all the stuff. Uh, these three pin models we can directly plug into the three pin plugs and they'll work for devices like ACs, uh, TVs, anything. Uh, the working will be demonstrated by Sambhra and Hari. As you can see, uh, this is a, just a sample of a room in which you have a number of appliances that require uh, to be interfaced using a single remote. Sing, I mean a single application. So in that application you can add as many modules as you want and each module is given a unique address. So through which you can activate any uh, modules found in the room. So I would just, uh, these are the hardware requirements. Um, actually a relay to activate any module, voltage regulator, batteries uh, and uh, along with this we need the Anidwino board. So the cost of entire thing is quite lesser than using the conventional Arduino board. I have got a question at this point. When you are putting the circuit into the power itself, why you require the extra external battery to operate on? 
Yeah, actually we had tried it using adapters as well. Actually we we had tried. Why didn't Why didn't you add a SMPS in between and get it process? Yeah, actually we wanted to make the module as small as this. So for which, why if we used the SMPS, it the, it could not fit inside. So for the purpose of demo, we had uh, used an external battery. But it required different hardware. Yeah, uh, it requires for getting to the be power from the socket and pushing it to your circuit. One. Second thing, when you add on the external battery, the life of that circuit will entirely depend upon the life of the battery. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, we wanted to do it, but since we wanted to show it just for a demo, we had used a battery. Actually, we had given the same. Uh, we had thought about same thing. Okay. okay. And this is this is the block diagram of what we have done. Is the room automation? Uh, we have. Uh, uh, an application in user's tablet or uh, mobile which is connected to the server. So we can send either commands to turn on or turn off a device, add a device, uh, delete a device, anything in this application which is connected to the server. That server is connected to the client's home, home PC which is connected to the master module. The, the master module is the one that sends commands received from the uh, computer to the uh, slave module uh, and the commands are received through serial communication that uh, clients P I have written laptop or PC it can be uh, this is just done uh, to show here but it can be either a single board computer like raspberry pi and so on we have not used it uh, but the server is mandatory Sun server is needed for executing all this Actually, we wanted to expand this for multiple rooms. Uh, but see, when we are saying that we are reducing the cost to 80 rupees or 100 rupees on the interfacing circuit, if you add on the cost of the server bandwidth and other parameter, the ultimate product acceptability and the ecosystem logistic will all uh, again go into the luxury elite segment. So whether the server is mandatory or we can get rid of the server and get the connectivity by some other way. Uh, if we want to access from our mobile phones, which we have to get connected through a network the local without any network we can't send data so uh, the master module sends commands to the slave and the slaves sends an acknowledgement to say if it is turned on or turned off and uh, we so the communication between the master and slave is through infrared and as you all know wireless communications are uh, usually done with digital modulations so we have employed PWM for uh, communicating between the master and the slave and for such a communication the master sends packets of data I mean frames of data and the frame follows a protocol which is little similar to the RC5 protocol and the acknowledgement travels in the reverse direction. You have got lot of receiving modules available in the home they are being identified by unique number or something you told correct? So whether they are IP addresses or whether they are the uh, your own numbers or mapping okay. things. Each module has a controller inside an Arduino controller. The controller will be coded with the address. Hard coded. Yeah. So uh, we have used uh, four hex bits, which means the first three bits are used for addresses, three digits. So three hex digits correspond to 12 bit binary address. They are not configurable. Yeah. They are not configurable. They are hard coded. No, then address is hard coded it is yeah. not configurable it can be made configurable from the from the because uh, uh, i am just imagining a system everybody has got it is in home so the numbers will exceed uh, very soon yeah as of now we have used 12 bits extend it further to 32 bits which can interface as many as 4 billion devices if we use 32 bits but still hard coded is not a good strategy yeah <laughs> okay this is the module may I now pass it to samrit to continue this is the uh, slave module which we have uh, prepared. Uh, the image shows the front view of it. The back end of it has uh, three mail pins which uh, directly go to the wall socket. In the front end, we can connect any electrical appliance like uh, refrigerator, laptop chargers, or anything. The slave module also, uh, the slave module, as you can see, has uh, TSOP receivers to receive the IR signals from the master module. And uh, it also has an IR transmitter to transmit the acknowledgement back to the master module whether the uh, appliance has been turned off or on. Next. This is the internal uh, circuitry of the slave module. Uh, this is the master module which we have prepared. The master module uh, similar to the uh, 
slave module also has a ir transmitter uh, and an ir receiver the transmitter will transmit instructions to the slave module in the form of pwm signals and the receiver will receive the corresponding acknowledgement back from the slave the master module is connected to the home pc or laptop through usb this is also the uh, internal circuitry of the master module uh, the circuitry of master and slave are uh, pretty much the same now uh, coming to the limitations of our project the first limitation is the line of sight problem as you know uh, the ir transmitter needs to be pointed directly to the ir receiver to make it work uh, as such uh, if we employ this kind of automation uh, in a room then if a room suppose has uh, multiple wall sockets suppose it has two three wall sockets at uh, different locations then the master module needs to have two three transmitter all pointing uh, to that direction this is one of the limitations again uh, another limitation is the transmission distance issue ir can only give a range of about uh, 30 feet uh, our setup uh, which we have developed it works well for about uh, 15 to 20 feet but uh, above that the reliability gets very low so these are two things which we are uh, planning to fix and uh, we we will uh, overcome these problems in our future enhancements how we will do that uh, piyush will explain now uh talking about the future enhancements uh, the first one is the multiple slave modules uh, right now we have just shown two slave modules but as we said we have a 12 bit device that, that corresponds to 2 uh, to 12 devices so uh, for 2 to 12 devices it can be operated uh, we have just shown it for two right now uh, longer transmission uh, range and reception range uh, as i said right now it's just working for 15 to 20 feet but through some hardware modifications it can be easily extended to about 30 feet and uh, i guess that will uh, automate any room uh, the concept of repeaters now uh, what we have done right now is a room automation system it does not automate any room the all five star hotels are more than 30 feet lounge hmm. okay no, no we simple. can make at max we can get uh, 30 feet now, in case yeah. the room is bigger than uh, that like uh, suppose this hall then but uh, suppose there are walls and uh, obstacles yeah, in yeah, between yeah, we will explain now. the concept of repeaters can be used uh, it goes in the future future enhancement uh, the repeaters will be uh, simple modules which will contain just ir transmitters and receivers uh, they will serve the purpose of uh, transmit uh, receiving the ir from one room and transmitting it to the other room uh, this will uh, solve the uh, line of sight problem Uh, so uh, we can uh, extend the room automation to a complete home automation uh, then goes the check status signals uh, we have connected a check status led on these modules uh, which which will indicate to the user whether his device is on or off and he can check it anytime uh, wherever he is in the world uh, and the concept of universal remote uh, what we have done right now is developed our own protocol for ir transmission and reception uh, but for controlling devices like tvs and acs they have their own protocol so Uh, if we know their protocol and feed it in the master uh, all types of devices can be automated uh, now we'll go with the demo now 